Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be talking about how to launch a rear wheel drive car. Foot down, a little bit of spin, actually does a really nice job and there's 60. Now I know what's behind me looks uh, probably boring and intimidating, um, but I promise you it's neither. It's actually really fascinating stuff, the insight into how to launch a rear wheel drive car. And we're going to break this down into three sections. First of all, what's the process? Second of all, what is the maximum you can accelerate a rear wheel drive car, the maximum acceleration it can have uh, based on the grip of the tire, not power. So we're just gonna assume you have enough power uh, to spin the tires. And then we're gonna get into uh, probably the most important part, how do you improve how fast your rear wheel drive car can accelerate? So the process, if you've watched my videos on how to launch a manual transmission vehicle or how to launch an automatic transmission vehicle, then you know this basic process, uh, but it's a little bit different for a rear wheel drive car and that's what we're gonna talk about here. So foot on the accelerator or brake or on the clutch and pedal, um, and then you're gonna release either the clutch or the brake, and that of course will send you on your way. Now the important part here for a rear wheel drive vehicle is that as you start to accelerate, you have that weight on the rear tire, you're gonna have load transfer to that rear tire. So initially you're gonna be accelerating at one rate, and then you're gonna have more load transfer to those rear wheels, so the rate at which you can accelerate has increased. So now you can give it even more throttle, and you can keep accelerating faster. And as you accelerate faster, you transfer more load. And that process just continues back and forth um, until you reach a balance. Now, can you just go on forever and then pick up the front of the car? Well, no, a lot of times this isn't gonna happen. And a similar way to think about this is if you slam on the brakes in your car, the back end of the car typically doesn't come up. You still have some weight on the rear end of the car. Now you can design it in such a way that you will have all of that load transfer go to the rear end and then you'll pick up the front wheels. And uh, then of course you lose steering. Um, but we're gonna talk about here how do you find the maximum? Where is that point that it balances out? So as you're accelerating, you have load transfer, you can then accelerate faster. You have more load transfer, you then can accelerate faster. Where does it all balance out? So we're gonna take a car that has a 50-50 weight distribution. It's gonna weigh a thousand kilograms, uh, which isn't really all that important. Um, the weight of the car can be whatever. The frictional coefficient uh, of the tire on the ground is going to be one, and then the distance from the center of the vehicle up to the center of gravity is going to be half a meter. So the distance to the center of gravity, half a meter. Okay, so we're gonna start with a very simple question, and that is, what is the static acceleration? How much can it accelerate without any load transfer occurring? And so we've got half the weight on the front axle and half the weight on the rear axle as a result of that 50-50 weight distribution. So if we have half the weight on the rear axle and the coefficient of friction between the tires and the ground is one, you multiply those together and we can accelerate at half a G. That's what I've solved right here. So the vehicle can accelerate at half a G. Well, if it accelerates at half a G, what is the load transfer to the rear wheel? And so that's what this equation is here. So basically, just to summarize, I'm summing the moments at this point. So I'm gonna take all the forces, uh, this half G acting about the uh, center of gravity, and then of course we have our reaction forces of our two tires, and we can create two equations, sum the moments at zero, and then we can of course say that x plus y must equal the weight of the car, and then you can solve for x and y in that equation. Um, so I've solved those here, and that gives us uh, x is gonna be 5,886 newtons, and then y is there. So x is going to be 60% of the weight of the vehicle, the load, and so that means you have 60% load transfer. And if you have 60% of the load there with the gravity, uh, the coefficient of friction being one, then you can accelerate at 0.6 Gs. Okay, so I've simplified this into a very basic equation here, x equals 0.5 plus 0.2 G. And this is kind of gonna be our infinite sum to find out where this all ends up at. So initially we can accelerate at half a G plus whatever load transfer we have. And so we're gonna have 0.5 here plus 0.2 times 0.5, that gives us 0.6. As you can see, this equation works uh, as we've figured out here. So 60% load transfer, and that means we can accelerate at 0.6 Gs. Now that we're accelerating at 0.6 Gs, we substitute 0.5 for 0.6, that gives us 0.62. Then we put, substitute 0.62 for 0.6, that gives us 0.624. And so it goes on forever, and if you infinitely sum this up, you'll eventually come to the maximum acceleration for this vehicle is 0.625 Gs. So that's the maximum rate uh, where it balances out, and you can accelerate at that constantly so long as you have enough power to do so based on the traction of the tire. Okay, great, but this number isn't all that high. I mean, there are cars today, even rear-wheel drive cars, which can accelerate much faster than 0.625 Gs. So how do they do it? 
Well, the way you can improve this, uh, there's several ways here. So the first way we're going to talk about is raising the center of gravity. So using these equations, um, and actually I've simplified it all into a much more uh, basic equation which you could apply to any car. So here we have A, B, uh, C, that's our center of gravity, the distance of that, and here's our vehicle. And if you plug in these uh, numbers into this equation here, we're going to find this number right here. So if we plug in all the numbers for this vehicle into this equation uh, using these variables as you've seen here, it'll give us 0.625 g's. It's a more simpler way of doing it than, you know, working through the math here and doing it infinite amount of times. Uh, but it's a bit more tricky to explain where you get this, so that's why I went through this basic formula here. Okay, so if we substitute, one of the ways we can improve the acceleration on the rear tires is if we substitute the center of gravity from 0.5 to 1 meter. So we're raising that center of gravity um, a whole half meter. And in doing that, you can see that we can now accelerate at 0.833 g's. So a significant improvement in the amount of traction we'll have on the rear tire. And that's just plugging all these numbers in this equation right here. Now, you can also do this by shortening the wheelbase. So if we shorten our wheelbase from 2.5 meters down to 2 meters, well, that's going to improve our acceleration uh, for a rear wheel drive vehicle to 0.67 g's, assuming we have the power. Now, both of these are kind of dumb to do. You don't really want to raise the CG or shorten the wheelbase of your vehicle because it's going to be less stable. Now, if it's just a drag vehicle, fine, it may be fine to do this, but there's better ways of doing it that don't sacrifice handling. And so that's what we have here. So let's say you change out your tires. Originally we had tires with a coefficient of friction of 1.0, but we found some stickier tires and they had a coefficient of friction of 1.1. Well, that's gonna raise our maximum acceleration from 0.625 to 0.705, so a significant improvement there, 0.08 Gs, uh, just by changing out the tires. You can al also do this by moving the center of gravity back. So from a design standpoint, having a 50-50 weight distribution isn't always ideal, uh, for example, in a, a rear-wheel drive car, because you may not have maximum acceleration. So let's say the car has a 60-40 split rather than a 50-50 split, all else held constant, same vehicle, same uh, coefficient of friction, same center of gravity height and all that, it changes from 0.625 Gs to a maximum acceleration of 0.75 Gs. So this can really tell you why, you know, you start to look at some vehicles and they have a 60-40 uh, rear to front weight bias and you're thinking, why is the distribution that way? Um, 60 in the rear, 40 in the front, and that's because, you know, it's gonna be able to give it more acceleration, uh, maximum limit, uh, rather than if it were a 50-50 and be limited at 0.625, depending on the height of the center of gravity. And then, of course, you can increase downforce. Uh, that's just something that requires speed. So once you get up to a high enough speed that downforce is applicable, you can increase how much you can accelerate if you have the power. So I hope that was insightful. I think it's pretty cool to think about, you know, how can you increase the maximum rate at which your rear wheel drive car can accelerate, especially from a design standpoint. Uh, so thank you guys for watching. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those below. Hello everyone and welcome. In this video, we're gonna be talking about how to launch an automatic transmission vehicle. Oh man, that pulls. <laughs> Now the process itself is fairly straightforward, but we're going to be talking about some of the unique characteristics of how an automatic transmission works and that could help.